We're going to talk in this video about basilar artery occlusion as a cause of acute stroke and how to identify basilar occlusion on a CT angiogram. So this patient presented with a severe stroke syndrome including profound alteration of mental status, progression into stupor and coma, as well as quadriparesis weakness of both arms and both legs, profound abnormalities of extraocular movement, and a, a impaired pupillary light reflex on both sides. That's a classic description of a severe basilar artery occlusion ischemic stroke. And uh, on the CAT scan angiogram, here we have our source images. We have our axial thick MIPS and our coronal thick MIPS. So looking at the source images first, we see coming up from the skull base, both vertebral arteries, we see a more uh, dominant left vert, as is the uh, common pattern. Uh, we see a diminutive right vert, and the two come together at the vertebrobasilar junction uh, here. And here's the basilar coming up. We can already see uh, one pretty notable finding before we even get to the level of the occlusion, and that is the degree of contrast to pacification here is uh, noticeably lower than you see in the internal carotid artery on both sides as we come up, and we'll see why shortly. So as we come up farther, we see the basilar about midway stop, and we no longer see contrast to pacification. Here's the unopacified basilar artery in cross-section, and then up at the top of the basilar, we see some reconstitution by cross-filling from anterior to posterior by way of the posterior communicating artery, the pecan. We see this, uh, once again, even better in our uh, thick MIP reconstructions. Uh, we see here at the circular Willis level, we see the opacification of the top of the basilar, uh, and we see opacification of the posterior cerebral arteries on both sides as a uh, largely fetal pattern uh, PCA here uh, with some connection at the top of the basilar uh, and a smaller uh, connection to the anterior circulation on the right side. And then below this, we see no filling for a stretch of the basilar, and then we see some filling here. So essentially, as we talked about in our video on ICA occlusions, we have uh, contrast coming up, uh, but far less opacification of the proximal vessel by the direct injection uh, compared to the anterior circulation in this case because of that occlusion at the top of the vessel. Uh, there, there really is nowhere uh, for the contrast to effectively go through a main artery. It can go through basilar perforators into the brainstem, uh, but that's a, a much higher resistance system, so there's just not as much flow of uh, contrast to pacified blood into that vessel below the site of the occlusion. In the case of the basilar, uh, the coronal is a particularly good view uh, on the reconstructions. We see our dominant left vert, our diminutive right vert, uh, and we see the, the vertebra basilar junction here. The basilar comes up, and we see that hard stop right there. Again, scroll through the, 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 the occlusion to make sure that there's no hard turn to the vessel and to confirm that it is indeed uh, an occlusion of the vessel. And you can see a shadow, a ghost here of the vessel filled with clot, uh, preventing the contrast from making it all the way up. And yet again, we see reconstitution distally uh, of, of the top of the basilar in this particular case uh, by way of uh, cross filling. And as we've talked about in other videos, once we've identified the site of the large artery occlusion intracranially, we now need to look down in the cervical portion of the CAT scan angiogram, the neck component of the study, to evaluate the anatomy there and find uh, whether there is a clear flight path uh, up to the level of the clot intracranially. Here we have our source images, and we have thick MIP reconstructions in two different planes. Starting with the source images, we're looking here at the skull base. So here we have uh, the foramen magnum. Uh, we have the two vertebral arteries passing intracranially. So yet again, we have, as we discussed before, this dominant left vertebral artery. We're going to follow this down from the skull base. And the trick here, uh, the vertebrals can be uh, fairly tortuous in many cases. Uh, you need to follow that artery in and out of the plane as we're scrolling up and down, particularly on the thin source images. So here we come and we're going to have a loop and we're going to go back down again and then around and then you're going to follow the two vertebral arteries here. We're going to focus on the dominant left but you can see on both sides the vertebral artery is now passing through the transverse foramen uh, of the vertebral body and the cervical vertebral bodies and we come back down here and then we see we're now at the level of the common carotid artery on each side so this is a good way of orienting ourselves we have the right common, left common, right vertebral, left vertebral, 
and keep going down. And now we've left the level of the vertebrals passing through that transverse foramen, and we're now in the low neck passing in the upper chest. We're going to follow this vessel. Again, whenever you get disoriented, you can always come back up, find your vessel in that transverse foramen, and work your way down. Keep your mouse nearby to not lose track. There's a loop in the vessel. Here's where you really need to go up and down. So it comes to another loop. And then here we have uh, the origin of the vertebral artery. There's a little kink here, uh, but uh, we have a clear flight path uh, from the origin. Same thing here. We have our, our aortic arch. We have our subclavian artery coming up. We have the origin of that vertebral artery, that same kink that we identified here. But again, it's not uh, expected to be something that would make the uh, artery impossible to select. It's just a sharp turn here. Same thing we see in, in this reconstruction. Again, if you can't find it on the reconstructions down at the level of the great vessels, then you can always start looking higher up where you see that vertebral artery passing along the bony structures through that transverse foramen at each level, and then follow it all the way down, again, back and forth, following those loops until you get to the origin of the vert at this left subclavian. Same thing here. You can see multiple levels as this vessel makes a fairly tortuous path down, loop, loop, and your origin, which is a little bit harder to see in this particular reconstruction. So it's good to look at it in multiple planes uh, and get your view of the uh, cervical anatomy of, in this case, the vertebral artery on the way up to this patient's uh, large artery basilar occlusion.